gentlemen welcome to she said she said it's another Saturday night and thank you for joining us we have a really important guest tonight mm -hmm. <laughs> he's quite international so before we introduce him I want to tell you what my partner said so she said that it's amazing that he's the only person she knows who's not really fond of Obama <laughs> <laughs> and she said that with all his achievements he wouldn't think he was this young. Right. And I don't even know how young that is. That is young. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Vergara. Thank hey, you. Hey. Hi. Thanks for having me. Hi, and thank you for coming over tonight. No problem. No so, problem. are you That's single? <laughs> uh, first question is first. <laughs> the, the most important question. Yeah, the most important. I'm currently single, but I have, I've been in a relationship for the past five years. Five years? Yes. Don't you think that's a long time? Everybody seems to think so. Yeah, especially she. <laughs> yeah, she probably thinks it's a really long time. She's going to love seeing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. The reason I said international is because Andrew actually lives in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. He's an actor, director, um, writer, and he's done plays all around the world, from Edinburgh to Hong Kong, Singapore, mm -hmm. where else? Uh, Manila and Manila, Washington, D.C. Yes. So you started here in the Philippines? Um, yes. 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 My, professionally, I started here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, as a? I started as an actor. Oh. In fact, my first professional show was with somebody you know. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, you had a play? We did a play together. Mm -hmm. um, in, shall I say the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in 1994 when okay. I first met um, Cutie. Right. And, and that changed um, your life. I mean, I mean, no, okay. <laughs> that play changed my life because, it did change. as a matter of fact. No, no, why don't you tell us how you ended up? The play was Greece. So a lot of us lived here, but you may want to tell them how you ended up getting into the play. Um, basically, I was just out of college. I graduated mm -hmm. in 94, and yes. I, I was a little bit young for, mm -hmm. for a graduate. You were yes. still living in Saratoga. I, I was, I was in, I graduated in upstate from New York. Skidmore yes. College in upstate New York. And Skidmore, I, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. And you were here for? I was, I was 19 years old. I was like, I, I graduated college. I'm not even old enough to drink. I should just bum around Manila for mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Manila's the best place. <laughs> um, but no, I was, um, I was here in Manila just for vacation. I was planning mm -hmm. to spend a few months there. And uh, I saw, I was reading the paper one day and I said, hey, there's an addition for the musical Grease yes. uh, with, with Leia Salonga. I was like, uh -huh. that'd be interesting. I had done theater in college as just oh, you a, have. Okay. As, as a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my regular studies. My course was in government and French. And I just did theater because I enjoy singing. And I just wanted, you know, it was just a hobby okay. aside from my studies. Since you said you enjoy singing, you're going to sing for us before you go later. Um, <laughs> okay. So just anyway. Because I enjoy it doesn't mean I'm very good at it. <laughs> but we'll enjoy uh, it. Anyway, so, so I saw the audition. I, I went to the audition and... What did you, know, you do in the audition? You know what? What I, song did you sing? You know, I don't even remember. Oh. I, I don't even remember what I sang. I probably sang something like, I don't know, Impossible Dream or something uh -huh. silly like that. Okay. <laughs> um, did you go there thinking, you okay, I, this play is mine or whatever? I don't think I'm going to get it, but I'm going to... Honestly, because I'd never done anything professionally. Yeah. I... I had no expectations. I'd never gone to a professional audition. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Were you nervous? I was a little bit nervous once I got there because I saw the quality of the singers. Yeah. As you know, I mean, obviously, you know, Filipinos just are natural singers. Yes. They're naturals. Um, yes. I had to train to actually mm -hmm. get to where I was because I, you know, yeah. I didn't have a, as good as ear, an ear as everybody else. But if you train, then you'll uh, still have to have the talent. Uh, well, you have to have a little bit of something, but you have to work hard. Um, but when I saw the quality of the people coming into audition, like, oh. 
I was like, okay, well, that's it, you know. Uh -huh. But um, they liked something, I okay. suppose. So you sang, did you dance? There's a, that's there's, always part of the. There's audition. always a okay. vocal audition first, I think, and yes. then they weed out. They weed out the. If you pass the vocal audition, audition and, dance. And, then, and then there's a dance, then there's a dance portion of the audition. Then you know they teach you some combinations. Right and there and then. And you gotta and then, do and it. If you pick it up, then <gasps> they see that you have, you know, the ability Potential, to learn. Yes. Yeah. And if you um, still pass that, you have the reading. And then so you go through all that. So you do the singing and then the dancing and the acting. Yeah. Yeah. So they I, know I that you're yeah. capable. I never had to go go through any audition. <laughs> we always have to go through that. That's the whole right. process, like mm -hmm. in repertory, even if they know you, you yes. still have to mm -hmm. do it for a friend. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know. I was lucky. I think they were looking for a lot of fresh faces mm -hmm. because a lot of people who did that show, for them, for a lot of them, was uh, it was their first show as well. Right. J. M. Rodriguez was in it. it was yeah, he was here. Uh, yeah, he was on the two show. weeks ago. He right. was, that that's what, that was his first professional show. Oh, okay. um, and, and that's where you met also. That's, that's where, where we met. all met. That's you all, all three of you. Yeah. That's hey. right. Um, so after that experience, get, getting into Greece and working, you know, with with Leia and a lot of the and cutie you know, and, and and by the way Leia handpicked the her co-stars right her her scene that's right that's right she, Danny she, and um, um, the guy who played Danny uh, and what was his Zach's role Kaniki Kaniki she she auditioned them from the states that's right she, and she, brought them in here she, really yeah. that's right she and Tita Julie Borromeo went to the states to audition mm -hmm. Amer American actors from Broadway yes. with bro Broadway resumes. So we had three. We had three That's from right. New York, right? That's, That's right. right. And everybody else was uh, local. Local. Everybody. That's correct. Mm -hmm. How yeah, long they, did that run? Boy, two months at least. Yeah. Two and a half months. We had so like 52 shows. You were here. Between Meralco and UP Theater. It was the highest oh. paying theater show at the oh, time. Uh, yeah. We were yeah. paid really well because it was produced by Team Image and yeah. mm -hmm. they do concerts. Yeah. So we Kay. had great So you stayed teams. here for the whole run mm -hmm. and did you stay longer? I stayed longer. I ended up doing a couple of other productions after that. Um, as a, an actor? As, as an, an actor. actor. As an actor. Okay. Um, I, I worked with uh, Tito Chingoy Alonso's yes. group. Um, we did the Great White Way. Remember this? And then uh, we, and then yeah. I worked with um, Monique Wilson and New Boys. Mm -hmm. We did chess. Um, and then I, I went to the states. Oh, after that's that. right. You did chess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, within a short, very short period of time, I got to work with a lot of people mm -hmm. who I wanted to work with. It's it's actually kind of funny because, <laughs> you know, I, when I was in college. Um, is when Miss Saigon came out. It's, it's a huge deal for all of us yes, as yes, Filipinos. Of we are so, so, so proud of them. Yes. Um, and we were, made us very proud to be Filipino and saying, "Hey, look, look, we have talent, and, uh -huh. and, and, and it show, and you know, a lot there's of them proof. Too. There's mm -hmm. proof right there." And one of the thing, things I said to myself in college, when I was doing theater, was like, "I'm gonna work with her one day. Oh. I'm gonna work with her one day." Within, within couple of years I worked with you know Leia and Monique yes yes, yes. so yeah. it was so who did you like to work with more um th well they're they're different because mm -hmm. Leia is such a such a great singer mm -hmm. Leia is an amazing amazing singer yes. and Very. she's one of those people uh, she's pitch you, perfect. you can't teach that uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can't teach that it's in you um Monique on the other hand was trained so well from such a young age uh -huh. that you saw you saw how professionally she was you saw how the training and you saw how hard she worked so I learned so much from both of them mm -hmm. Leia worked just as hard yeah um, but I think Monique focused a little bit more on the acting yes. earlier on and then Le Leia was just known for her fabulous voice yes. um, which but then she developed her acting as well as mm -hmm. she went on um, incidentally speaking of Monique she's now teaching uh, that's, that's right, Monique. I, I ended up working with Monique a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, for, he directed a for, lot of plays for Monique. For New Voice Company. Okay. Um, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. Okay. You were saying she teaches now in before I she asked. Te she teaches um, in several of the better schools in London, but. Um, oh, so course, she's gone. She's yeah, she, but she, you she have still, to listen she still, to this. She still runs her theater company here, mostly oh. by fax and phone. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> internet. Fax and phone. Um, but she's she's here, I think, a couple of times a year to just oversee the running of New Voice Company. Um, but she's also in London. Uh, she got her master's at Central School, which is where Judy Dench went, and, mm, wow. and, now, and now she teaches Ooh. at uh, she teaches at Central now, and also at um, RADA, which is the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, yes. which is one of the 
most famous and most difficult mm -hmm. acting schools to get into. Yes. To get into and to, and teach. to say that yeah. you know you yeah. teach there. Of course, you're, yes. You're teaching. You don't only study there, but you teach. I mean, you're teaching tomorrow's yes. stars, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, all these all these new young actors from from England. Um, Got to go through the school. Went to that school, yeah. for example. You know, what's that guy's name? The the one who did Wanted with Angelina Jolie. Um, oh. James McAvoy. Oh. James. James McAvoy. Mac uh, McAvoy, I think his name is. He went, okay. there. So he went there. He went there. So mm -hmm. all these young, good British actors went to that yes. school. And Monique's teaching there. Okay, so how did you get into directing? I mean, you're um, an actor. Okay, yeah, you always thought you'd be an actor. But I, did you always think you were going to be a director? That's, that's the thing. I didn't always know he I was an actor. You just wanted to work with these people. Like, someday I'm going to work with yeah. these people. I didn't always know. You know, it took me four years before I called myself an actor. I had been doing theater here in Greece and right. New Voice and stuff, and people would ask me, what do you do? Um, well, I, <laughs> We're doing a play. I, I'm doing a play right now. It took me, guys, guys, I felt like you have to deserve that before you yeah, call yourself an actor. Yeah, is that what you actor. think? I mean, like, some yeah. people here in the Philippines, yeah. they make one movie and they're not really seen, uh, but they're already actors. And I, you, you know, know what? I, you know what I really hate. I, it's a pet peeve. I hate the term artista. Yeah. Because artista means you know you're an actor, but yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. artist means something completely different than actor. Yeah. Artist, oh, we're not artista. Yeah. Artists. Yes. Yeah. Are creators. Yes. Artists create. Artists, you know, do something magical. Yeah. You know, people. Actually, so, yeah. Any anybody can do can go up on on stage or on in front act. of the on on the, in front of a camera and say lines. Uh huh. But they're not artists yet unless mm -hmm. they've refined their craft and they've worked hard yes. at it and they've developed something substantial. Yeah. So I really. I know, Sorry, I know. Pet peeve, artista. Yeah, yeah, I know, okay. But here in the Philippines, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, one movie makes you an artista. And it's an, like an in thing. Mm -hmm. All these little, all the little children want to be, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, anong gusto mo magi? Artista. Uh, I mean, like, it's like their dream. Okay. It's funny because when I teach, and I have. Oh, you, you also know, teach? I teach, I teach. That's how I actually got, got into direct, realized uh -huh. I wanted to direct when okay. I started teaching. What, did it start from teaching? When I started teaching, I realized. Here, right? Yes. For the I workshops? liked the fact. Oh, here? Yeah. Um, I liked the fact that I, I could help sort of help other people mm -hmm. move along in their progress. And that oh. made. It, for me, it felt better than applause at the end of the play. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the play, you get applause. But as an actor, you're always thinking, man, I really. Messed up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's true. It's it's um, like um. But but as a director, you can you can see people's progress, and I don't care about the applause. I see how people improve. I see how they how they grow. Yes. And I think it's more fulfilling. Yeah, I guess sense. um that's what they say. When you are of service to other people, mm -hmm. then it's more fulfilling on your part. So after so. But you, you also were took teaching. some acting um, courses, oh, right? Uh, you you took some. Art. Yeah. The, when the, we were in London, because we were in London at the same time. He and Monique were in acting school. Yeah, we took. Um, oh. I was sponsored into um, the Actor Center in London, which is. Um, Not anyone can get in. Okay, That's how, why how, were you, how, how were you sponsored? Basically, exactly, I didn't get in. Basically, well, you should have gotten um, a sponsor. Well, I didn't no, know. New in Voice time. Company yeah. sponsored me. Basically, to get into, to take classes at the Actor Center in London, you have to be a working equity member actor. In London, oh. basically, which is difficult in basically, itself. if you ha you have to already be a professional, yes, it's like saying you already have to have passed your bar exam as a lawyer okay. before you can go to the school. But, but then how many years? Monique, which Monique, is how Monique, got it. Okay. Monique which is was equity, it. and then because as a as a director of a theater company of her own, she she requested them. He said, "We'd like our you know we'd like our other artistic directors to yes. to also learn some more and um, to bring what whatever you have to teach to uh -huh. Manila so that." We all, you know, grow as artists together. Oh. So I got I got an opportunity to study there mm -hmm. for a little bit. Did well. you ever, um, well, so you were teaching there. Did you ever teach here? No, I taught here and I taught in Washington D.C. Oh, so what is the difference? Like, if you teach here, most of your students are Filipinos, yes. and then like, <laughs> okay, I want to know. I, I talk about this all the time um, with with my friends in the states. Filipi younger Filipino people okay. have so much more respect for teachers than American kids. <laughs> Maybe okay. because you look too young to be a teacher there. Not only that, it's, it's the culture. Mm -hmm. American kids are very, very self-centered. Whereas mm -hmm. kids here, when we went to school, you never messed with your teacher. No, you not never, me, yeah. You know, growing up. No, we did res respect our teachers. We, we did, yes, yes. You have to. Even if you mess with your teacher, you know, it's, yeah. 
it's not different. too much. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. yeah, but even in American movies, they really mm -hmm. mess with their teeth. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's and culture. And um, you know, there's there's the kids who want to be there, and there's the kids whose parents place them there. Mm -hmm. For the kids whose parents place them there in, in the states. It's they very. It's really hard to get through them because because uh -huh. they know they're just there for that hour yeah. and a half, and they don't and want they to don't, be there. They don't care about what you have to do. But oh, here, is it part of school? Is that why they're there? Some no no no. The schools I taught at, they were you know voluntary. I mean, like like a, a drama a, thing. A, like an. But you know, some parents push their children. Okay, yeah, I want you to be an, an artist. Right. Here, when I what my experience was, even though there's I had kids in you know summer classes. Who you know their parents just put them there because some some activity to do during the summer. Yeah, <laughs> you could get through the kids yeah. because mm -hmm. they they gave you afforded you a certain level of respect. Mm -hmm. So if they give you enough room, then That's you have enough. an opening yes. to get through to them, and then they can really learn something and get something from the experience. Oh. Um, my finding is that I mean the way I've, it's just so much harder for some of the American kids just because of the culture. So after you teach the American kids, how are they at the end like? Compared to the Filipinos oh, it, at the end, in in that sense, they're the same. When they oh. when kids kids are the same. When they learn and they they really appreciate what they've learned. They and when, when they when they experience something new, mm -hmm. um, and they they have a certain amount of pride because they have accomplished something they weren't sure they could do. Mm -hmm. So whether you're Filipino or American, if you've accomplished something you were afraid of doing yeah. before, there's a certain amount of pride and that shows regardless of where you're from. Mm -hmm. So when you were, well, when you, when you found out that you were going to direct your first play, how did you feel? Um, I was nervous because the first play I did, well, it was... Was this way, falsettos? No, no. In a way it was easy because I was only working with one actress. Um, Which is Monique. I, I directed... Um, Monique in a one-woman show that we brought to Hong Kong and we brought, brought to Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, and it, it was easy because Monique and I had worked so much together. I knew what she wanted. Um, mm -hmm. She knew what I wanted and we talked, we just collaborated and she, okay. you know, it was a very, very easy relationship. If I said something doesn't work, then we'll work on it. If she thinks something mm -hmm. doesn't work, then we'll work yes. on it. Was, there's never any conflict or tension. Yes. And it was such a great, easy, relationship mm -hmm. she's I, a nice person and she's a great yes, person we just we crashed her house right one night before leaving for, That's right. for London yeah we're like hi Monique I'm sleeping here I think, I think they saw you for like two minutes and then the next day next morning we were gone because we had to catch a train um, yeah, she, yeah so, she was very nice yeah, she's, she's a lovely person um, okay wait sorry when you got into that how did you get into the directing like your um, first project I first Monique offered it no Monique first um, started when I was when you're not working as an actor and when I was here yes. and I was just working as an actor when there's no projects rep only does five or six shows a year yes. if there's nothing no show going on you have to find other work yes. so one of the things I did was I started teaching uh -huh. and then I started doing um, crew and you know oh, doing cool, yeah. doing That's um, fun. props I started doing lighting mm -hmm. I started doing um, and then when I started doing props and lighting and backstage work when he said why don't you stage manage so I, so I stage managed. Ah. Then after stage management, then why didn't you assistant direct? So mm -hmm. I assistant directed. So I really climbed. Yeah. I really went from. But that's good, the you know, rung. to do what you're supposed to do. Like when you direct, or you even stage manage. I mean, it's nice to go through all of that. Mm -hmm. I, th I think. But you gotta know. I think. I mean, if I do have a strength as a director, is that I understand the process. Yes. From every person's point, point of view. view. Yes. Whether it's my actor or my musical director. Or, or my props or my my yes. lighting designer. I know what they went, what they go yes, through. Yes. Yes. So I have a better, I have an easier that, way of communicating yes, with them. Yes. Because you understand what they're going yeah. through. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's. I think that's my strength because I went through all of that. So after that, okay. So are you interested to direct? Blah blah blah. And like. Oh. Uh, yeah. Basically, that's what happened. I think, right. The thing that happened right before my first directing job was um, I assistant directed and. I was an act. I was acting coach for Rent, mm -hmm. the oh. musical Rent. I was AD for that, and um, that was so successful, and everybody was so happy with with the product. And then Munich said, "I'm going to Hong Kong. I have a show. You want to direct?" I said, 
Which show was it? Why this? not? That was classical Monique, her one woman show. Classical, right? Gosh, and it's not like anybody asked you, it was no. Monique Wilson yeah. who asked you to yeah. direct yeah. her. Yeah. Right. Her, yeah. I know. Exactly. No, I know. It was, it was a lot of pressure because, you know, she puts a certain amount of trust in you and you don't yeah, want exactly. yeah. to let her down. Uh -huh. um, well, and obviously, she's, Monique, right? yeah, yeah, she yeah. saw no, she, that you could do it. No, uh, you know, she, if there's anybody in the industry who, who really was my mentor. mentor. It's you know, it was Monique. I learned from everybody. I learned from Tita Baby, Barredo and Rap, Tita B. But I learned from them. Everybody mm -hmm. had their style. I learned from all the actors I work with. Um, mm -hmm. Different things. But Monique was really the steadying influence. I really yes. saw how she built her company, how she worked with her actors. And I said, that's, that's sort of how I want to work with her. So how often are you here in the Philippines and how often are you all around the world? Um, all around the world, yeah. that's often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky because I have family all over the world. He texted oh. me for New Year's um, from Ukraine, right? Yeah. Happy New Year from Ukraine. I wow. <laughs> Where in the world is Andrew, right? He's everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I have family and friends all over. So, I'm, so like 75% away and... Honest, well, I've actually been away from Manila full-time for about five years. Okay. I had been working here for 10 years doing just theater. Yes. And um, I was sort of missing my family. I had four sisters. Uh -huh. And at the time... There four were, sisters? You're, you're the only boy? Yeah, the only boy. Oh. You're the only boy. You, you nice. meet um, one of the sister's kids a little bit really? on the show. She's, she's Italian. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's a really so adorable So I had been here for 10 years and my family, I'd always get phone calls from my family or emails saying, what are you doing there? <laughs> well, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> yeah, because we weren't considered uh, yeah, a yeah. real That's job. That's true, yes. Uh, are, you, are, you are you still on your vacation from yeah. college? <laughs> that was 10 years ago. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, no, no, no. I know how that feels. No, they're very proud of my accomplishments. In fact, they, they, make, to they make up stories about my accomplishments. <laughs> you know how family... Like no, like you more know, than you would, you've done. Well, not. I don't think they've made up stories, but you know how they when, just color it really like, well. Like, oh, he's he's a famous this and famous that. I said, well, you know what? I'm just a theater person. I work in the theater. I have relatively successful at that. Yes. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm a famous this or. Famous, uh -huh. But to them, oh, famous. You know, he he does theater all the time, so he must be like famous. I'm like, no, 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 no. Relax. But Before we go into a break, I want to ask you what's the best advice Monique ever gave you. Um, as Lots. an actor, as okay. an actor, okay. the best advice you can give somebody as an actor is don't play the emotion. People always say, "What does that mean?" People always say, "Oh, this in this scene you're angry, or this this scene you're sad, or this scene you're jealous." Yeah. Don't play angry, sad, or jealous. Yeah. yeah. You don't play the emotion. You play the situation. You play the moment. Oh. Don't just say, "I'm sad." You have mm -hmm. to say. I'm sad because m my mother is is having a hard time and she's sick in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Then that's what you play in your head. Don't say, don't play. I'm sad. Mm -hmm. Don't play. My mom's in the. Uh, what you do is play. My mom's in the hospital. So the sad comes naturally. Right. So that's the best advice that she gave you as, as an, an actor. As an actor. Yes. As a director. Oh my goodness. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too many. I mean, I think. Okay, what name I, a few then. I think the the main lesson I learned from Monique is consistency and respect. So, because everybody says.